this is a mini Game of Thrones news update, so don't get too excited. Not saying that you get excited when you see my videos, but if you do, get a little less excited than normal. Okay, so this is kind of a weird random bonus video this week, which I might start to sprinkle in here or there extra mini videos along with regular releases. Oh, and there are spoilers for the final season of Game of Thrones. So if you're trying to stay spoiler free, don't, don't watch this video, please. So anyways, Jamie's actor Nikolai recently did an interview with Huffington Post and he had some interesting things to say about the final season of Game of Thrones and his character's relationship with Cersei. First, he talked about how hard shooting the final season was. He told Huffington Post, I think if it hadn't have been the last season, people would have just collapsed. We wouldn't have made it. I mean, at one point the crew had 52 nights in one go in Northern Ireland. Just unheard of. Of course, the 52 nights of shooting refers to the epic battle we're going to see at Winterfell this season as they hold back the others, which I'm still just fucking losing my mind over how awesome that battle's going to be based on all the leaks we got. He also talked about Jaime's relationship with Cersei, saying that the moment where he left her at the end of season seven was something that had been building to for seven seasons. Which Nikolai actually had his own thoughts on how his character would get to that point and had some heated discussion with the showrunners D&D. What I am happy about is Nikolai actually did try to get D&D to write in dialogue where Cersei and Jaime talked about the death of Tommen in depth, but D&D said, nah, that's a conversation they have off screen. Kind of like how we didn't get to see John and Sansa talk about how John was stabbed to death and resurrected. I would have loved to see that conversation, you fucking dicks. So he told Huffington Post, Dan and David have always played the long game the way they stretch things out. So when you get the payoff, it really pays off. And we had a lot of almost heated discussions about how I was going to get to that point with Cersei. Like I asked, why don't they discuss in depth the death of their son Tommen? And they told me, well, they do, but we don't see that. So all those things, it's so much fun and difficult, and it's also very frustrating. But then when you finally find your way, it's very rewarding, for me anyway. Which makes it even more interesting because you know there were some of us that thought Jamie should have rode away from that crazy bitch a long time ago. Well, feel justified because Jamie's actor also felt the same way. He remarked on the end of season seven saying, I thought that end scene in season seven would have happened before. For me, playing Jamie when he gets to that point, it really was, finally, finally he says no. Finally he stands up to her. It was such a brutal scene because they're playing two different games. Cersei's playing the Game of Thrones and Jamie's playing the honest game of survival and trying to accommodate both his sister and his brother. I know they changed the relationship dynamic between Jamie and Tyrion from the books by that conversation they had during Tyrion's escape. And part of me actually does like Jamie still caring about both of his siblings and trying to do what's best for them. But he also said that his character hasn't completely given up on her or their baby, so obviously Jamie still cares enough about Cersei to believe that maybe they can get back together. But as for the baby, that baby's super dead. Not, not regular dead, super dead, just so dead. On how the show ends, he said that he believed D&D &D talked to George about the ending of his books, but that D&D &D also had a specific ending in mind that they were working towards. He also made it sound like George hasn't actually written down in concrete the ending of his books, so it, it could change. And if you've been stalking George as long as I have, you know George changes shit from what he says quite a bit. Perhaps D&D having a specific ending isn't the best information, but it does actually make me believe George shared with them his ending as of that moment for the books and that D&D took it and maybe they altered it a bit or altered it a lot. Maybe they took little bits of George's end, but added their own twist on it and made it theirs. Just like they took Stannis and tweaked him and made him theirs because Stannis in the books is nothing like Stannis in the show. Anytime D&D talk about Stannis, I'm just like, did, did you read the book or books that everyone else did? Because I don't think you did. But in the end, I'm fine with how they end the show. You know, you, you guys do what you think's best. 
I'm just along for the ride. Okay, if you guys remember, there was actually a beard watch some many months ago for Nikolai, and Nikolai actually talked about him having a beard in the final season. So in the interview, he joked, well, he's on the road for a while. Wherever he is going, it takes some time. So his hair grows. He didn't bring a trimmer this year. He always carried this little neat traveling trimmer, but he left that behind since it was a quick departure. I just love him. Lastly, he talked a little bit more about the ending of the show saying, I wrote the writers when I finished reading and I just said, I don't think you could have done a better job at finishing this story. To me, it was very satisfying, but also very surprising and all the things that I was hoping for. It still made sense. It wasn't like one of those where the killer is suddenly revealed in the last act and you go, oh, I didn't see that coming. Here, they've done a really, really good job. So far, I feel like everyone that knows the ending of Game of Thrones keeps saying, well, if you look at it objectively and put aside characters you love or hate, you realize the show could only end this way. I'm a bit suspicious, but we'll see. We'll see. That's all for now. Enjoy your weekend. Do something fun. Do something boring. And as always, Punch an orphan. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, or don't. Just, just, just be you. Just be you. Unless you use a total dick, then be a better version of you. And if there's not a better version of you, there is. You just gotta believe in yourself more. Watch a little bit of My Little Pony. I think they talk about believing in yourself. That might help you.